you know, the generational scars, you know, from not having this kind of knowledge and understanding. But, you know, when I was growing up, it was don't let anybody know that we're having problems in our family. Sure. Keep it to yourself. You know, my dad grew up, you know, a child of the depression. Mm -hmm. And that was what generationally they were told. Mm -hmm. Hide your feelings, hide your feelings, especially if you're a man. Oh, my gosh. You're not allowed to show any kind of weakness or any kind and weakness, meaning caring or uh -huh. nurturing or things like that. Right. So there are all of these voices from the past that have been speaking these same kind of um, suffocating words. Uh -huh. And so what happens, those children who were suff whose feelings and emotions were suffocated, then grow up to be teachers. Mm, right? Oh, yeah. And they affect not only their own children and their own family, right? Yeah. But then yeah. they affect all of the children oh, that they come right. into contact with. Yeah. And okay, again, well, you all are answering my question then. So my <laughs> question was, here I was in kindergarten 50 something years ago. I never walked into a classroom with the chart of the emojis. And right. I never walked, you know, my classroom didn't have all that. But these kids, they have it. Why? I mean, what's the difference? I seem maybe I turned out okay, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But 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 you're saying that the people, the adults from my generation, we didn't learn how to empathize and, and yeah. Excuse me, um, I'm sorry, Sheila. It wasn't no. popular. Oh, here here's the part. I think it's you're leading to one of your questions. Here's the thing. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your whole generation's fault. The thing was consciousness is rising back in your day people there were no big mega grocery stores people had to cook a lot there were no big laundry mats or laundry you had to wash your clothes people were doing busy physically manually doing life you yeah. see so people so talking about your emotions was unpopular it was it was the devil you know it was something because it was so uncomfortable it made you're not working hard yeah, no one had yeah. time for feelings right. back okay. then and so okay. now as we are in the digital era, we have much more time to explore our feelings. But in your day, there was no time to be thinking and feeling. You okay. had to get to work and do something. You had to go and wash the clothes, feed the this, to do the that. You know, there wasn't, we, people didn't, leisure is new. Leisure right. is a new thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, this is another part of what I teach is that people didn't have time because you were busy doing life. Now everything mm -hmm. can be done from your smartphone. I love my smartphone. Mm -hmm. And everything can be done from here. You can go about your business and do a hundred other things. So now we can be on the phone having, you know, Facebook fights, you know, you know, commenting. Who has time to comment? But a lot of but a lot of the people who in this day and age are still the workers who still don't have time, they're the ones who are bearing the brunt yeah. of those around them not having the social skills. Look at how we all, when COVID hit and look at how we all started praising the essential workers like doctors and nurses and all that. What about the daycare owners who were bringing kids in every day and taking care of their kids so that the doctors and nurses, what about the garbage men? What about all those people who are still underpaid and overworked and underappreciated? They don't have time still to explore all of these things. Well, right? Sheila, during COVID, a lot of people were home. And so I deal with parents, which forced a larger uh, set of the population to have to look inward of how to manage their homes and um, needing new skills because they were not doing anything else. So we were able to capture, and I'm sure all across this, I've seen so many different workshops, many people jumped into that part of the American, like, oh, or you, you know, you have nothing to do, I'll, you know, I'll help train you. So there's been a lot of training of filling that space, despite, you know, a lot of people still had to work, but a lot of people was at home and it was a whole bunch of workshops to help you get it together. So so I think we were able to capture a lot of people in this space as well. Not, not as much as we, we would want to, right, but I think a lot of people right. learn some new coping skills because of COVID. I also wanted to respond to your 50 years ago question a little bit differently in that uh, we learn social emotional skills as kids through modeling. Yeah. So 50 years ago, you learned your social emotional skills through modeling, they just weren't necessarily ones that are going to help you in life or, or get along or collaborate or, um, you know, take a different perspective. And so you've had to do some unlearning 
of what you learn, right? So you saw teachers who maybe didn't collaborate uh, on the, their curriculum. Um, maybe teachers told you that you had to squash your anxiety at test taking time. Maybe you had teachers who said, there is no joy in the classroom. You have to do that on the playground, right? So you learned all kinds of social and emotional lessons. They just weren't the ones that we want to become intentional about teaching our children. Right?